Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on engineering science N3, working on hydraulics, that is uh, revisions. Uh, so we've got the question that you're going to be focusing on from August 2017. Uh, that is the one that you're going to work with. Uh, so the first part of our question 6.1 was to state the Pascal principle in words. Take note, this is given in words. Sometimes they might ask you to draw a diagram to present that, but here it's in words. So remember that if the pressure is applied on an enclosed system, the pressure will spread evenly through the enclosed fluid and be the same throughout. That is the most important part that uh, the pressure is going to be the same uh, throughout. All right. So that is what we are given from the Pascal's uh, principle in words. Uh, okay. The second part of our question, that is uh, on 6.2, we are given that a force of 400 Newton causes a pressure of, uh, in this case, uh, 300. And um, all right. So we are given that it causes 350 kilopascals. All right. That's 350 kilopascals in a pipe filled with the water. Take note, this pipe is filled with water. Calculate the diameter of the pipe in millimeters. All right. So we have got uh, the force in this case that is being applied, the force of uh, uh, 400 newtons in this case being applied. And the pressure in the pipe is given. We have got the pressure of uh, three. 150 uh, kilopascals, which uh, which is filled in what this pipe is actually filled with water. So from water, uh, we're actually talking about the density and so forth, but let's see what we have uh, from there. We are asked to calculate the diameter, but this is supposed to be given in uh, millimeters. All right, so what what is it that we are going to apply from this? We've got the pressure and uh, we've got the force. Remember that pressure can be calculated from the force and area. So meaning to say we can play around the formula for pressure since we know that pressure is equal to the force over the area in this case. All right. So what it means is that we can be able actually to calculate our diameter from the area because we know that the diameter uh, from our area, we can have our diameter since area is uh, given as a pi d squared over four. So meaning to say, if we are able to calculate the area, therefore we'll be able to calculate the diameter from there. So how can we calculate our area? Because we have got the pressure and we've got the force. So let us calculate our area first. We can simply make A the subject. We cross multiply, uh, that will be P times A, which is PA is equal to one times F, which is F. So to find A, we divide by P, which is our pressure. In this case, that is going to give us the formula for area in this case, meaning to say our area is going to be taken from force over the given pressure. Where we are given in this case, our force being uh, 400. So we've got 400 divided to the pressure, which is uh, 350 times 10 to the exponent of three. Remember, this is given in kilopascals. So kilopascals, that's times 10 to the exponent of three. So meaning to say, we are going to obtain the area in this case. So if we check our area is going to be uh, something like a 0, 0,00114, something like that, which is uh, in a square meters. So take note, this is uh, in uh, square meters, our area. We can calculate it in square meters, then we can convert later on from the diameter that you're going to obtain. All right. So remember what I said before that if we have got this area, it's going to be easier for us now to calculate the diameter. So what we can simply do is to make this diameter the subject. All right. So and also if you cross check, if you divide this direct from your calculator, you obtain a fraction, which is uh, something like... Uh, 1 over 875. So I'm just going to take advantage of this fraction that you're obtaining because it's an exact value. Yes, you can use this decimal, it's fine, but uh, uh, we can take advantage of that decimal, of that fraction that you're given. So let us manipulate here to make uh, D the subject since we said area is equivalent to pi D squared over 4. So we can cross multiply to make D the subject A times 4. That's 4a is equal to 1 times pi d squared. We've got pi d squared. So we can divide by pi. We can divide by pi both sides, meaning to say d squared is equal to 4a 
over pi. So to find D, introduce the square root both sides, meaning to say our diameter is equal to 4A over pi. So meaning to say we can obtain our diameter in this case, which is going to be the square root of 4 times the area that we got here. So like I said, you can use this decimal as it is, or you can simply use the fraction in this one that we got uh, the exact answer, which is one over eight, seven, five, everything over uh, pi. So this is over pi. So you are going to obtain your diameter in this case as uh, something like zero comma, uh, 0, 3, 8, 1, 4, 6, and so on. So it depends with the value. If you use this value, you're going to just save uh, something approximate to this one, not exactly the same. So to convert to millimeters, uh, remember that millimeters means times 10 to the exponent of minus 3. So for you to, uh, to convert now to millimeters, you multiply by the inverse of times 10 to the exponent of minus three, which is going to be times 10 to the exponent of three. So if we multiply by 10 to the exponent of three, we are directly converting our answer to millimeters. The answer that you are obtaining from your calculator will be direct in uh, millimeters, which is going to give us something like 38,146, something like that in uh, millimeters to three decimal places. All right, so this is how we could have uh, calculated our diameter from the information that we are given it's a matter of uh, manipulating the formulas that you're given uh which formula to work on uh depending with what you are given the information that you'll be given in this case all right so let's check the other part of our question which is on 6.3 so on 6.3 we've got another information that we need to take down so that we'll see our question all right we are given in this case a pump uh delivers 70 liters of oil per hour okay so take note here uh we are given a pump which is delivering 70 liters of oil per hour which is uh liters we are talking about the volume in this case so this is uh the volume per hour that we are given so we are given the volume per hour of uh 70 liters per hour okay we shall see that one later on then to a reservoir at a pressure of, we are given the pressure being applied at that moment of 200 uh, kilopascals. And uh, also, we are asked to calculate the power required by an electric motor to drive the pump. So what will be the power required in this case? So we do not know the power that is uh, required. All right. So let us check with the information that we have. How can we obtain power? All right, so many formulas that you can actually work with. Uh, we know that power is equivalent to, from this information, we can think of work done. Power is equivalent to work done over time taken uh, in seconds, which is actually work done per second. All right. But the same uh, work done can be calculated as uh, our work done. Remember, it's equivalent to the pressure, so work done is equivalent to the pressure times the time, uh, not, not times the volume. Uh, per, remember, per second, this time must be in seconds, all right? Or work done in just like that. So meaning to say to have work done, we are going to have pressure times the volume per second. So this must be volume per second and not just only volume per second, our volume in this case is supposed to be in cubic meters. That will be volume per second, which means cubic meters per, per second. So meaning to say we need to obtain these guys. Once we have got this, therefore we are simply saying uh, from this formula that we have got here, we are simply going to take uh, the work done, pressure times volume per second, then we have got our power as long as it's per second. So we can simply obtain our power in this case, which is simply work done per, per second. So that is a work done per second, which is simply our pressure times the volume per second. So we are going to have our volume per second, which is a in cubic meters per second. All right, so let us see what we've got here. Do we have these? We've got our volume in liters per hour. So the first thing that we need is to convert from the liters to the cubic meters. 
because we are given our volume is supposed to be in cubic meters in this case. So thus we can convert uh, from uh, the equation where we are going to take uh, here. Okay, let's use this part. We are going to take, uh, remember that a cubic meter is equal to one kiloliter, which is 1,000 liters. So as we've got 70 liters, so meaning to say to convert 70 liters to cubic uh meters we are simply going to divide 70 divide by 1000 so that's 70 divide by 1000 which is going to give us uh 0 0.07 so this will be our cubic meters in this case all right then at the same time we are given that this is uh okay this is per hour so we are given uh per hour in this case 70 liters per hour and hour We've got uh, one hour, which is equal to 3,600 uh, seconds. All right. So meaning to say we are going to have uh, our final answer or our final calculation as the power is equal to the pressure. So our pressure in this case, which is uh, 200 kilopascal, that's 200 times 10 to the exponent of 3 times the volume per second, which is our volume. Uh, we got uh, 0 0.07 uh, cubic meters per hour. Let's take note, this is still per hour. So you're supposed to have it per second. So for us to have it per second, we are going to divide by 3,600. All right. So this is going to give us the equivalent power in this case. All right. So let us see what we are going to obtain from our calculator in this case. All right. So let me just share the part of uh, the screen so that you can see. So that is uh, 200 uh, times 10 to the exponent of uh, 3. All right, whatever that we have times uh, 0, 0.07 of uh, 3,600. All right, so this is going to give us uh, 3, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, and so on and so on and so on and so on. All right. So that is what we are going to obtain as our power in this case, 3, comma, uh, that is 3, comma, 8, 8, 9. So just say 8, 8, 9 in watts. All right. So we are given in this case, um, remember we, this is going to be work done which is going to be yours per second okay so this is going to be yours per second work done per second that will be yours per second and yours per second that's a watt all right so this is what how could you have uh calculated this question all we need is to apply all the information take note you are supposed to convert these two to per second not to use per hour if you use per hour like that one it means our answer is wrong because we are working with per hour of which it must be per second that is uh when we are calculating power all right then on 6.4 we are now given the ram of a hydraulic press is a diameter of 100 millimeters the plunger is a stroke length of five centimeters and the diameter 25 millimeters calculate the number of strokes of the plunger to lift the ram over a distance of 25 centimeters all right so let us take our information again we've got uh, two things that we are going to consider we have got uh, the plunger and we've got the ram in this case all right so we've got our ram and we have got the plunger in this case all right so given that the hydraulic press has got a diameter of uh 100 uh, millimeters so this is on the on the ram side all right so we are given the diameter of 100 millimeters if we divide by 1000 to convert to meters that's 0 0.1 meters then the plunger is a stroke length of five centimeters which is the the stroke length on the plunger five centimeters divide by 100 that will be 0 0.05 in uh, meters all right okay that's it uh, and the diameter also, we've got the diameter on the plunger. We've got the diameter of 25 millimeters. So if we divide by 1,000, that will be 0, 0.025 in meters. Calculate the number of strokes on the plunger. So we need to know the number of strokes that we are going to obtain here to lift the ram over a distance of, so we've got the height of the ram in this case, which is given as 25 centimeters. So convert to meters. That's divide by 100, that would be 0 0.25 meters. Remember, mostly 
uh, on the questions that we have been working mostly. If you if you if you have been revising with us, you will see that we have been working on questions where you are being asked to calculate this edge, which is the height for the ram. But now they want us to calculate the number of strokes in this case. So here we are talking about the number of pumping strokes in this case. So remember what we said that uh, from uh, the the ram and plunger concept, we know that uh, d squared uh, times h times the number, this is uh, from the plunger, all right? Uh, that is d squared times the stroke length times the number of pumping strokes must be equal to d squared times the height. So mostly this is the formula that we actually use to calculate h, if you still remember. But now we are given the edge. We are not calculating edge. We want to calculate n, the number of pumping strokes. So meaning to say, we can simply make this the subject if we divide by d squared h both sides by d squared h both sides. So we can cancel and remain with n. So n is going to remain as d squared times h over uh, d squared times h, where this part here on top is representing our RAM, all right? So this is for the RAM and this is for the plunger, all right? So with this information, we can be able to calculate the number of pumping strokes. Therefore, n is going to be d squared from the RAM. Our d is uh, 0, 0,1, that's 0, 0,1 squared times the height of uh, 0, 0,25 uh, in meters everything over d squared from the plunger, which is uh, 0, 0,25. That's 0, 0,025, 0, 0,025 squared times h on the plunger, which is uh, 0, 0,05. All right, so this is going to give us the number of pumping strokes. So as you can see, engineering science entry, it's all about the formulas. All right, so that is what you're going to have in this case, which is going to be 80. So we're going to have 80. Uh, pumping strokes in this case. So these are 80 uh, pumping strokes. So that is how we determine uh, with the information that we are given that was the appropriate formula to work with. So sometimes maybe we might have uh, another formula or uh, something that you are given that is got a certain formula. You work with the information that you are given. Each and every information has got its own corresponding formula. So that was it, guys, on hydraulics. Uh, question, uh, having a total of 12 marks from Maison African Motives till we meet again.